My favorite time of day. Oh my goodness, I gotta put this back in my watercolor thing here. Now, let's, uh, <laughs> all my doodling and stuff, getting, working on a, working on some kind of landscape, uh, landscape type things, ideas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, let's get the cards and let's see what the Holy Spirit read of the day is. Let's see what the topic is today. What is the topic today? This is my favorite part of the day, doing the Holy Spirit reads, getting the topic, because I think these can be basically the most beneficial for people to kind of ruminate about, think about if it has anything to do with your life or not, and, uh, you know, something to uh, think about. If it doesn't, you bypass it, you know, na 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 I didn't hear it. If it does, then something to perhaps look at. So the first thing we have out is, oop, pulled out two cards, is healing. Healing. That's so important. We need to heal and the second part is enchanted. Okay. So let's see what else we have. Get our star cards and see what the planets are with that. Healing and Enchanted. You know, Enchanted is being in a fairy tale land. Sometimes we need to get real in order to heal. Okay, Nurture. Nurture. Series. About Nurture. And we have the sun, the source, the source, okay. Yeah, okay. So we'll get the other. <clears throat> I'm gonna use the Rourke, Acme. Acme to row today with this and we'll see what we have with it. But this is basically telling me again, yeah, that uh, nurture, if you want to heal, you want to nurture a healing aspect in your life, then you need to look at what is the fantasy you're holding on to. More than likely, it's a nightmare, not a fantasy. Something that is not elevating, but something that is, um, again, not true. It's an illusion. It's an illusion a storyline that you're holding on to that is enchanting you. Now, what happens when you're enchanted? Okay, it means like you have a veil over you and you're not seeing correctly. I just, I just had the um, thing come in. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> And I just see the, uh, from the movie with George Clooney, and they, they said that, you know, we're by this water. And they heard the sirens. And they said they loved him up and they turned him into a toad. <laughs> just loved him up and turned him into a toad. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, soggy, soggy bottom boys. <laughs> oh my goodness <clears throat> but I digress <laughs> let me get back to the reading <laughs> they enchanted him loved him up and turned him into a toad 
<laughs> oh my goodness. So what we have here is, yeah, the healing, nurture, being willing to, you know, fight your way forward, looking for truth. We have the Knight of Swords. Usually it's charging forward, but in this one he's slaying the dragon, okay? We have him here with the dragon and the sword, and, uh, okay, so overcoming that, the things that you've been nurturing in order to gain healing, and enchanted, we have to look at the source of the storyline, okay? Now, usually this is the stinky fish card, okay? Um, something coming in, stinky fish, but this is, uh, also, you know, enchantment, we have the guy out here playing the flute, you know, enchanting, enchanting his flock with his flute, okay. So again, it harkens back to this thing of um, if you are in illusion, if you're going to heal, then you have to nurture truth rather than this illusion, letting this illusion continue to have a veil over you where you're not seeing the truth, but you're seeing this illusion. And, and you know, I like that word illusion because it shows what it is, illusions. It's stuff that you're believing that is keeping you, keeping you uh, in, in a, you're a prison of your own making. So if it's not freeing, if whatever it is, this belief system you have that's not freeing, then it's an illusion of truth. Then it's not reality. It's something that you have adopted, have run your life around, but it's not, um, again, it's, it's not beneficial to you. It's keeping you, um, it's keeping you ill, it's keeping you in this fantasy land, and you need to delve deep into looking for the truth of the situation. And this is what usually people wanna run away from. They wanna run away from the past things. They try to cover it over. They try to ignore it. They try to, you know, they always need to be doing something because if they stop, their mind is gonna go play back on these, um, <clears throat> back on these times, okay, and keep running, rerunning the old tapes, okay. But if you stop and you look, usually what you'll find if you look really deeply at it, and it takes more than just the surface looking, okay, you have to delve deep. If you look at it deeply, you usually find that what's been fostered on you has come from somebody else's failed life ideology, okay? It has nothing to do with you. So once you can come to see that and really see it 100%, then you can let go of it. Then you can say, this is their baggage. It has nothing to do with me. I don't need to claim it. I don't need to take it on. They need to take their baggage on their own train, you know, uh, I'm not picking it up and carrying it anymore, okay? So again, it's about fighting forward, nurturing healing, rather than this illusion that one has carried for so long and continue to make up storylines about it and bring it into the soap opera of your life, okay? So there is that freedom that's available but it comes from really looking deeply at the issues that one has been carrying that has been driving one's life. You know, if you come from um, a poor family or they tell you you'll never see, maybe it pushes one to succeed, but at what cost? What type of success, okay? What type of success is one chasing? Or we saw just uh, recently that beautiful young lady, what was her name, uh, Shalise, something like Shalise, 
that was uh, uh, Miss America, I think it was Miss America, and she jumped, she committed suicide, okay? So you have someone like that that's absolutely gorgeous, wants to present as really lively and fun, but underneath of it was depression, was feeling not good enough, always trying, striving to, to put out there that she's successful, but underneath of it, underneath of it was that seed of that illusion, that fantasy that she's not good enough, that depression. Depression comes from not feeling good enough, not having enough, feeling lack, insecurity, all of those things, fears, insecurity, lack, even though outwardly, and sometimes when you see somebody presenting like that, like a lot of the comedians, their comedy is fueled by uh, this feeling of lack. And you'll see so many of them talk about when they are in school, it was better to have people laughing with you, you know, and if you became kind of comedian, you know, it would cover up some of the pain. Okay, so a lot of times that comes from pain. It doesn't come from, you know, now I'm not saying all comedians are that way, but many are, they are, they are uh, doing it to, to cover over pain. Better to have them laughing with me. If I'm, if I'm putting it out there, then that's okay, but if otherwise people are laughing at me and that's painful. So I'll, I'll, you know, make it work for me in a way, okay? So again, you know, look and see if you have these feelings of insecurity, fear, lack. Look at it deeply and find out why. And once you come to the seed of it, you dig that sucker up and you, you get rid of it. You don't plant it. You don't nourish it. You don't water it. You weed that garden. If you see those things coming up, you pull those things out, okay? Because you don't need them in your life, okay? So thanks for tuning in, Love and Light, and we'll see you online.